Hello arena craft mages, but wait, there's more. Here is part six of our epic sode related to Zendikar Rising spoilers. Believe it or not, this is not the last episode. We actually have enough content for another episode, which we'll be releasing over the weekend. And then keep an eye out for CGB and my review of the initial Zendikar Rising standard metagame, which we'll be releasing on Monday next week. So, exciting time. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Keep an eye out for the next episode. Catch you later. Uh, I backed myself into a corner with these DFCs because some of them are just so bad, dude. <laughs> you don't like this one? Let me read it. Okay, you, so yeah, I, I'm not a buyer on this card. Read it for me. <laughs> Salundi Vision. Big surprise. It's a blue card. Two in a blue instant. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order or get a tapped blue source. Oh my gosh. It's three mana for find an instant or sorcery or it's a tapped blue source. That's exciting. I'm excited about this. This is because every now and then as a blue mage, I build a deck that doesn't have 20 creatures in it. It has a variety of instants and sorceries that I want to put into my hand. <laughs> Some of them even blow up creatures. And having those on turn four when the creature mage wants to kill me is very important. So getting to look six deep for a wrath or an extinction event might be relative to the situation. It's also very interesting that this can find a land that you can pay three life for to have untapped because those are on their front instants and sorceries. You want to play this card in a deck that runs a variety of useful and powerful spells besides this card right you don't just like you don't want a vision into another vision. yeah that's that is that's super a disaster bad. yeah yeah so this is my style of card man i'm coming down on this card about as hard as you came down on the green one which is fair i just ugh, not feeling it dude i'm not it's so expensive i think he's pulling his hair out right now you guys can't see it <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't bring myself to play this card. <laughs> no, I, I'm not surprised, but plenty of plenty of the blue mages will because we don't attack with things. <laughs> we just make sure the attacking things suffer. And we you actually look for something, right? So this is such a common blue play pattern, blue mage play pattern, that turn three, you leave three mana open. The opponent says, I guess I'll do nothing because I already have two creatures on the battlefield and I don't want anything to get countered. And you say, well, rats, I didn't do anything that turn. And you end up cycling your neutralize out of shame and sadness. And now you get to dig for that shatter the sky. Boom, yeah. One of the things that's going to be sad about this is if you're running too many Birth of Miletuses, if you're running Yorian main deck... Yeah, don't play it. Don't play them. Yeah, so you really, like, uh, like if you cast this and you whiff, that's just GG's, dude. You just That's just yeah. shame scoop right there. So Yeah, we're talking, like, 16. Like, 16 instant or sorceries that you want to spend three mana and hit. I'm not talking about opt. Yeah. Like, that's what you need to do. That kind of deck. Exactly. So to run this in your deck, you got to really think about it, man, because... You're going to have better land spells to run, so that's that's my feeling on that. <laughs> okay, CGB, take us into Nahiri's Lithoforming, yet another random red build-around do-weird-things card. Okay, uh, X red red sorcery rare, sacrifice X lands. For each land sacrificed this way, draw a card. You may play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control enter the battlefield tapped this turn. So combo something, 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 landfall combo, something, something, landfall combo, combo. I, I, I can see where this gets funky. We've talked about Ashaya. We've talked about the Minotaur that gives you combat steps. We've talked about the whose name is escaping me, the plant that makes 
or the five five that makes a bunch of plants and then puts counters on them. And all of that still doesn't sound like what I want to be doing with Nahiri's lithoforming. No. I, I, mm. this, this strikes me as one of those one turn kill decks, kind of like that other enchantment we were looking at earlier, where I feel like you kind of have to just have one of those go off, draw most of your deck scenarios. So Brian Gottlieb, co-host of the Arena Decklist podcast, has put together a combo deck which in which this is a main part of it. And it's comboing off with a creature we haven't read yet, but a creature that incentivizes you to play lands from your graveyard and get landfall triggers and stuff like that. So if that deck ends up taking off, then this is a key part of it. How does the opponent die? Yeah, he's got some kind of... Uh... I think I think he's using the fling thing, maybe. I don't know. Okie dokie, I, mega I don't plant. Know, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I I don't remember the exact combo, but he was pretty high on it. He and Jerry Thompson seemed pretty excited about it, and you know those guys are not bad at building decks. So that's that's kind of like the that's the thing that people have come up with so far. But that's basically what we're looking for here. Is is a of all we need to care about the landfall triggers. I think that's important. B of all, we need to have this kind of deck that aims to go off in a single turn. Otherwise, I just this card is flagrantly unplayable. Okay, yeah. Hopefully something like that does exist, because it would be pretty hype. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a powerful card, but dang, man. Like, in the scenario in which you sack four lands and you don't draw any other lands, <laughs> you're going to feel pretty crummy about that, dude. Y- indeed, indeed. Read Forsaken Monument for us. Five mana, legendary artifact, mythic, colorless creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional colorless. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. And the favor text is we shall forever roam. And the art looks like an Eldrazi's skeleton or something built into the into the environment which i think 99.9 percent of anybody actually excited about this card has something to do with the fact that the eldrazi were on zendikar last set they died and some vorthoses can't let it go oh man this card is very sweet and i doubt that standard will ever support this card so is this like for our arena mages is this like a historic only cube draft only kind of a card i'm playing this card specifically to punish red mages who dare give me an 01 artifact creature with their relic robber yes just gonna beat them down with it out of the bud baby gotta love it you're gonna you're gonna fay of wishes for your monument and you will make them pay there there is a card in this um set that like when it dies oh. it makes one ones equal to the power and it's that's colorless. A combo. That's but a combo. I, I, no it's it's no it's not it's it's, it's it's two cards that you can play that have some synergy but this is not a standard where you can spend five mana on a thing that will pay off later okay here's a question did this have to be legendary yeah you it's, think so? Look at that art. Read that flavor text. You tell me it's not legendary. You tell the Eldrazi fans that are listening that it isn't legendary. I mean, you tell me that Castle Ardenvale isn't legendary, yet here we are. Dude, I, I put a Castle Ardenvale on every street corner. Have you been to my suburbs? <laughs> I've got Castle Cul-de-Sac, baby. I guess the real question is, have you been to Ardenvale? Because, dang, they have a lot of castles there, baby. <laughs> just constant, constant, man. They're just dropping them like, like, like locusts. So for some, for some reason, this card needed to be legendary. But anyway, we're playing this with, what, Palladium Mirror? I'm not playing this. And you mentioned Palladium Mirror, so I already know you're trolling. Get Ginger out. Brute? We're cutting you oh, off. Oh, baby, Ginger Brute, we got that. <laughs> cutting you off. <laughs> Uh, well, in our eight Ugin deck, we're going to play Forsaken Monument and we're going to feel pretty gas about it. Turns out I can't cut him off, guys. He's he's, he's the uh, one just, hosting this Zoom meeting. Yeah, I can't yeah. stop him. He's still going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CGB, take us into this next card here. Akiri, Fearless Voyager, is one red, white, 3-3 three, three legendary creature core warrior at rare. Whenever you attack... A player with one or more equipped creatures draw a card. For a white, you may unattach an equipment from 
A creature you control, if you do tap that creature, it gains indestructible until end of turn. Okay, before we even analyze, I just need you to walk me through what it looks like where we use this ability and it doesn't absolutely suck. Yeah, that's the question. I think the gotcha, the gotcha is something like, we attacked with our creature and we drew a card and the opponent played a combat trick mid-step and I I got nothing, dude. (laughs) because what if they just play it before combat you have to tap it and you get no attack step and you get no card draw you get none of the things yeah so one of the reasons this effect is so bad is that the the supposed incentives we're supposed to play in this set are equipments that come in and attach for free right so then Mm -hmm. you spent a mana to unattach it and then you have to spend approximately a billion mana to put it back on your creature so that's not going to happen if you do you might draw a card this just seems like some <laughs> fancy nonsense to me. That's what it seems like. They do seem like they're trying to push this kind of like Winota equipment st- theme deck. This is, you know, a core warrior, so not a human. This smells to me like a flagrantly unplayable card. For people who watched the trailer for this set, this is the person that Nahiri like befriended. This person even saved Nahiri. Oh, really? And then Nahiri just shoves her off the off a cliff and kills her. And now we see why. Completely, just completely, completely unplayable. Completely un- unrequired in the party. Hey, you, get <laughs> off my cliff. Dude, Nahiri is just a bad... Nahiri's a bad dude, man. She is, <laughs> she is not the hero we were looking for. I mean, have you seen Markov Manor? Damn. Reclaim the Wastes. One green sorcery, kick a three. Search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. If the spell was kicked, search a library for two basic land cards instead of one. I'm kind of leaning towards this card not being playable, but I'm, am I missing something? I think Uro makes it pretty playable. Yeah. Yeah, just in you have a sorcery it is now in the graveyard and you have a land in your hand to make yeah, it more likely true. that you use every part of the uro buffalo that's a good point reanimating uro is the best argument i've heard so far i think that the biggest issue though is that we have all these it's going to be hard enough to build mana bases with all these spell lands and this incentivizes basics and less lands mm-hmm So I think most people won't make room for it, but there might be decks where it's right. That's what I'm thinking. It's not that it's not a card that would see play. It's just that I feel like it's competing for a lot of effects like this. And I don't know this is going to be the one you turn to. Mm -hmm. Granted, cards like this fill an important role in standard specifically. All of the other times that cards like this have been printed, they've seen play. They all usually have some kind of upside or another, and this one definitely does have an upside. But I don't know. Of all of the kind of like land searchy, land cheaty kind of sorceries or instants I've seen so far, this is one that impressed me the least. If you have a deck that's like two or three colors, and you are incentivized for reasons that we may have read earlier to have basics in your deck and not a bunch of pathways then this is a way to still play, say, a two-colored two-drop. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an option. I'm not sure it will be the right one. Yeah. Sometimes people, like you said, will shave down their land count to run cards like this. So if, this is, if, if you have a lot of untapped green sources on turn one and you're looking to replace lands in your deck with spells then this is a possibility. But we already have so many spells that could be lands anyway. So we'll see. Lithoform Engine. Read this one for us. Okay. (laughs) Four mana, legendary artifact, mythic. Two and a tap. Copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets. Three and a tap. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets. And four and a tap. Copy target permanent spell you control the copy becomes a token so let's just clarify can this only copy a permanent as it's on the stack resolving is that what that means yes okay yep. got it so probably just a commander card do we see any use for this in standard they got rid of fires man this card yeah. <laughs> this card could have been just going uh, off yeah, with fires of invention kind of yeah. Oh my gosh, they got rid of it. I It kind of blows my mind because part of me says the reason that fires 
was fires is because they had cards like this in mind that are ridiculous and enable things that you shouldn't be able to do and rarely get to do in magic. But most people were just like, okay, fires kill you turn five, just attack you with crazy giant cavaliers. Yeah. And they ruined everyone's fun. I don't think that there's any chance for this card in standard or a competitive format. And I don't think that will stop anyone who wants to play this from playing it. If I read this card and you said, that's me, there is nothing I can say to sway you. Go forth. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, this this card will do some fun things. People will cackle with glee. Here's a question. If you kicked a Jace and then you use the copy ability, do you get four Jaces? I'd have to read Jace and I don't <laughs> have... I don't have the energy. Okay. I have to save it. We still have more cards. Yeah, we still have more cards coming up. All right. Skyclave Relic Artifact at rare costs three, kick a three, indestructible. When it ETBs, if it was kicked, create two tap tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic, and you can tap any of these tokens or the original to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, Card looks unplayable to me. The card suffers because we don't want mana rocks right now. We want lands. Exactly. Landfall, like land, 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 spells that are lands. We want more land. If something changes and artifacts are a payoff, this card might see play later. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. Okay. Somehow this card is rare. So read this for us. Maddening Cacophony. One and a blue sorcery kicker. Three and a blue. Each opponent mills eight cards. If this card was kicked, instead each opponent mills half their library rounded up. Okay, CGB. If there's any card in this set that I am pulling my hair out, it's freaking maddening cacophony because now, whenever I'm playing best of one on the freaking ranked ladder, every fifth game is going to be some stupid blue mage who's just gunning for my library, man. They are just freaking gunning for my library wtf also why is this card rare you get that on ranked ladder oh I, yeah I, I can't i gave up playing play q because i can't go in there without <laughs> playing against mill oh yeah i mean play q is just gonna be demolished dude i it's just over yeah um, <laughs> don't and bother the, and to be clear i have never lost a mill but i get bored it's so boring it is a special kind of well Actually, you know, I can kind of relate because it's a time in a blue mage's life where they think I have become so epically enlightened by the greatness of the color of blue that I would rather figure out how to deal 60 damage to my opponent than 20, (laughs) a.k.a. mill, which is basically like acting like your opponent has 60 life. But what if they mill your bomb, CGB? What if they mill the color of mana that you couldn't find? It doesn't matter what you mill. Doesn't freaking matter. It's random. They were just in. There's just as many worlds where they just don't draw what they need or do draw what they need. Just yeah. Stop. I don't want to. We could do a show titled "Why Mill Sucks," and it wouldn't matter. We could explain this 150 ways, and people, this would still be a thing. People would still see mill cards and go nuts. And I too, as a young CGB, went through a period where I thought I was so mega brained that I was going to mill out their deck with a card actually called Millstone, by the way, which is where the this thing gets its name. Yeah, the original. And I went through that period too. Won some tournaments with it, and it wasn't because mill was good. It was because all the other cards were so good, nobody could kill me. And it didn't matter how I won. So if it doesn't matter how you win, win with the freaking card that does 20 damage instead of 60. It's like win with a shark typhoon. But anyway, as far as just going straight for the library, no. That's never going to be, no matter, before you even ask, I get asked this every day, I'm not joking. No, it's never going to be competitive. Maddening Cacophony is interesting because of one thing, and that is, is there enough payoff to just play your rogues deck or these cards with this ability and then cast Cacophony and get it all in one shot? Okay, so that is the question, and my hot take is that that just looks like an awful trap to me. It really does. It's not a good reason to fill your deck with Maddening Cacophony. That is for sure. It just looks like a trap. There's no other way I can read this card. Your deck already does it, and it already does it with cards that 
do other things. Yep. That have bodies attached to it that attack and block, that demand answers. What about this? What if a person approached you and they seemed somewhat rational and sane? You know, they weren't like drooling and foaming at the mouth. Meow, meow, I must meow. What if it were like a normal person? And they said to you, I'm going to run one. Because when I have it, sometimes it just does the thing on its own, and I never have a risk of drawing multiples. I think the the deck that would be more interested in running this is the deck that runs the um, the cancel with mill stapled to it. D- didn't say please? Didn't say please. You got it. So there's a more controlling version of this deck, and... You know, Mac wants to max on Drown in the lock. It wants to, I don't know, finish your opponent with Lock Mass Serpent or something like that. You know, maybe you're running like four copies of the Vantress Gargoyle. So that style of deck, I still wouldn't run it, but that's like more of an argument for me. But like in the Rogues, I just I can't imagine Rogues ever wanting to play this card. Okay. That's how I'm coming down on it. I don't think that you would be a a nutter, as the English would say, to consider it. And who knows? Maybe I'll get proven wrong, right? Maybe maybe the play pattern of Vantress Gargoyle into Vantress Gargoyle into Maddening Cacophony is just a game ender. Or maybe you just, yeah, you max out your Drown in the Locks, you max out your Vantress Gargoyles, you max out your all of the payoffs, and then you just jam and you know, that ends up being strong enough, maybe, but I'm, uh, color me super skeptical on that. Fair. Is it compelling to you? I mean, because you've played these decks more than I have, so I would ultimately defer to your judgment on this. Would this card be appealing to you in some small number in those decks? I mean, I I tried to propose to you the one of, like that was, that was what I might try it out as. And then, you could sideboard them if you're worried the Uro is going to empty the graveyard and you just want to refill. But, like, I want cards that do stuff. I don't want to just mill. Like, there's too many things that can go wrong if you have one or two creatures and Maddening Cacophony, and it makes those creatures better. So you play your Maddening Cacophony, and then you play your creatures, and your opponent kills them. And your Maddening Cacophony didn't achieve anything. It's just, there are just so many bad cases. And I'll tell you what, spending in a whole card just to turn on my Drown in the Lock, not enough. That's a two for one. So you just got to get more value out of this thing. All right, here's another Blue Mage's Judgment that I'm going to need for this card, Inscription of Insight. So it's the Blue Modal card, read it for us, CGB. Choose one. If the spell was kicked, choose any number instead. Dot, return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand. Dot, scry two, then draw two cards. Dot, target player creates an XX blue illusion creature token, where X is the number of cards in their hand, and it has kicker of two and a blue blue. So a total of eight mana to get all of the modes, or four mana to get one. Blue Mage's Opinion. Too expensive, sorcery speed. I never want to read this again. Yeah, this is the one. I mean, I'm not as down on it as I was on the black one, but I'm still not considering playing this in any deck ever. I'd play the black one first. Would you? Okay, I would. That's a, that's a that's strong. How, that's a strong. Oh statement. yeah, this this one is living like like as far as down and low on this <laughs> card. This one is like not even at my toe jam level. It's, it's not even <laughs> bargain basement. All right. Nope. I'll trust your judgment because I, I I read this card and I was like I literally have no idea. Everything about it is overcosted and should be instant speed. Yeah, everything about it. You know, as we read this, you're right. Why did the green one? Why did green get the instant one? Seems really, really mean spirited from wizards, to be honest. Okay, here's another one. Control Mage CGB. I would love to hear your take on Ondu Inversion. Six white white. Sorcery, rare, destroy all non-land permanents, or flip it, tapped land. Tapped white source. Yeah. Seems decent. Dude, I'm good. I- I'd probably play two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd play you're, some. Not gonna, you're not going to cast the eight mana, blow it all up very often. Most games should be decided ahead of that. But in a game that goes long, this is something you kind of needed Witches Oven and Trail of Crumbs aren't that big of a deal anymore, but like three Lucky Clovers sitting on the battlefield is... You gotta kill some of these catch-all stuff that your other things don't remove. So 
I think this card is like a two of in a deck that wants to stall out the game. That's it. What you have to remember is that an 8 mana destroy everything spell is not that big of a deal for a control deck. If a control deck doesn't get to 8 mana, it's probably because it already lost the game. So I would totally run this in just about any white control deck. Can I throw you another combo? Can I throw you a combo? Yeah, lay it on me. Oh, a Shia. Shia. <laughs> yeah, baby! All your creatures are forests. We've oh, found wait. CGB's this... leak in this set, and it is a lovely forest named Ashaya. Oh that's my gosh! It. No, I, that's not that's not insane. Like two, okay, Ashaya and two other creatures gives you eight mana, and it blows up all non-land permanents except your creatures because all your creatures are forests. I just love it, man. the The crush. This is this is a crush of the ages, man. I haven't seen a crush this deep since. <laughs> well, it's a weird card. Like, it has a line of text we have not been able to play with, you know? Yeah. Like, and we can find applications for it. And that's good because normally it would be a five mana, like, get this mythic out of my face. In all seriousness, I, I actually don't think that that's a bad combo. I mean, if, if a Shia ends up in your deck, then heck yeah, let's do Undo Inversion all day long. I love it. But yeah, onto inversion. It's just I think this card's gas, dude. I think it's going to be super playable. We have yet another rare, which means we should read it. Squad Commander, take it away. Three and white core warrior, three three creature. When Squad Commander enters the battlefield, create a one one white core warrior creature token for each creature in your party at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you have a full party. Magical Christmas Land. Creatures you control gain plus one plus zero, oh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. Okay, so this is a payoff. This is the kind of card worth thinking about playing in the four slot of your white aggro deck. Really? Yeah. I okay, think so. go on. Go okay. on. Okay, the floor on this is a three three that makes a one one as it comes in. Not amazing, right? But the ceiling is a lot higher on that. Okay, it's not questing beast power level. It's not necessarily a game ender. But ah, I think like a mono white aggressive deck could get really paid playing this card. Yeah, I don't think mono white can build a good party easily. I had a really hard time. Mm, like, that's true. I was trying, we, we talked about them on the last show, but I said I really liked Dark Priest of Iona. I could not build like a two color deck in white slash anything where i felt comfortable and confident about iona too many of the drops were clerics no that that you raise a good point right because the support needs to be there and if it's not there then this card is underwhelming so here's the thing when i want to branch out into colors for the party i want to play other four drops Mm, i want bassery's lieutenant and i want winota you know yeah and this card just sits in that spot and it, it's really one mana too much. It, it missed the curve, you know? And we talked about the vampire, like the heartbeat, stealer of heartbeats or whatever. So when you compare, if you can get that one down to a four mana play and you compare it to squad commander, squad commander looks pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I, one of the things that annoys me actually is that the tokens are the same creature type as the squad commander, because if it's spat out, tokens that had one other relevant party type on them then i'd be a lot more interested right oh yeah filling out your party Mm -hmm. so you you make a really good point the supporting cast it appears is not there and i do think that this is like a mono white card it's hard for me to imagine like maybe a boros card but it's true if you're playing boros why aren't you just playing winota so that was kind of my thought so i i think i think you kind of nailed the limitation on it if we get enough variety later on in standard, then I still do think this could be a pretty good top end in a white deck. Scoot Swarm. Two and a green creature insect at rare. It is a 1-1. One, one. We alluded to this earlier. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. This is interesting. Explain to me exactly how this card scales. I know that we're going to eventually end up with a billion insects, but the manner in which we do is I'm still haven't quite figured it out. Judge, 
<laughs> and here, Judge, <laughs> he's asking me questions. I think, isn't the theory that eventually each of these is making a 1-1 one, one every time the land enters the battlefield? A 1-1 one, one that makes more 1-1s. One, so, but here's the thing, right, is that they don't make more 1-1s. One, they just make a copy of themselves. So you Uh-huh. That is I guess also so it does created scale. from landfall. It does. Yes, scale. So every every land you play after you control six lands makes another swarm. So every land that enters the battlefield triggers both swarms if they're both still on the battlefield. So if you play a Genesis ultimatum that hits five lands. When you have one of these on the battlefield, it will create five swarms. And then if you play a land You'll get after that, it will more. make... Yeah, it, and from the one that was there first, it will make six swarms and, and so forth. It gets out of control pretty quickly. It's exciting. I'll give it that. And then your opponent casts an Ondu inversion and you cry. But, you know, who, who, who know. needs to worry about stuff like that, right? If we have a way to pump them all, there was a there was a ramp spell that puts plus two plus that puts two plus one plus oh. one counters oh. on each creature you control. Oh, 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 oh. Don't pick don't me, try to pick find me, it. pick me. Please don't try to find it. Canyon <laughs> Jaboa. Boom. <laughs> pick me, pick me, pick me. I just lost a no. co host. All right. <laughs> Um, so you gotta find a way to pump your squad or just let them all do the thing. This is also an interesting card with Winota because Winota lost like the early drops that can generate multiple bodies. It lost Legion War Boss, it lost Hanged Executioner. So this is something that can spit out a few insects and then trigger Winota. So uh, really? maybe not impossible. I'm just saying it's a possibility. F- I mean, I hear what you're saying, but at three, that sounds kind of bad. Well, of course it's not. It, it's never, this card is never going to be good if you play it for three mana, then make a 1-1 one, one every turn. You have to get more out of the 1-1s. One, yeah. That is the job. Yeah. I'm sure. giving you an I- idea of some ways to get something out of the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I mean, you're right. And there are plenty of other things to be doing. I really do eventually want to read, I just don't know where it is, but there's this card which gives your team a plus one plus one counter whenever you play a land and it's an enchantment and it is pretty good so when we get to that we'll probably refer back to this but yeah if you want a way to generate an incredible number of bodies over the course of a game this is it this is your dude so yeah we basically found our poly our new polyraptor we found our new mirror march go and have fun and uh post it on twitter okay kazandu mammoth one green green creature elephant add rare three three landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control kazandu mammoth gets plus two plus two until end of turn and on the back side it is a tapped green land honestly i'm kind of not into this card you like the fight card and not this card yeah wow okay i i was curious what you would say because yeah. i think i think it looks good i i mean i think it's fine I guess I'm not ready to say that this card is better or worse than that card. I'm I'm underwhelmed by it. Let's just put it that way. The, I think these green decks are going to need more landfall enablers to make this good. Here's the thing, like, we already play a 3 mana 5-5, five, five, and it comes with a 1-1, one, one, and it doesn't need a landfall to be a 5-5. Five, five. So I just... Maybe you play this just to up the threat density in your mono green deck. Yeah, I don't think you play it because you lack good threes you have good threes i think it would be to make sure that you just have enough yeah things to attack with yeah so maybe maybe it's good enough on its own for just being a playable creature which is a land yeah it's kind of insanely better off the top if you have a great henge or if you want to get a great henge into play than any other land in your deck would that's be. a good point great henge is a good argument for sure Okay, I'm kind of coming around. I'm kind of coming around. And if we if we have more landfall payoffs in our mono green deck, I guess it doesn't have to be mono green, but the one green green mana cost pushes me in that direction. It certainly could go in the landfall aggression deck. Mm-hmm. 
Like that right. deck is going to try to play multiple lands a turn, I think. And yeah, it's. I think that this card is better than it appears. I do wish it trampled. I, I just want a little more from this. Is that too much to ask? Probably. But it, I do think you need a... Like you are incentivized to make sure you have a body that can grow you you want to play with charms and fight spells like yeah they they need this kind of action yeah and the idea is if you need the land to make sure that all those things happen you can play it and if you need the creature like that's where the green fail state usually is right you don't have a creature yeah this can be a creature so this is one of the things i've noticed after just playing infinite mono green is that it's not necessarily a deck that always needs to hit its land drops untapped, but it is a deck that always wants to hit its freaking land drops. Like, I'd have these scenarios where I'd look at my hand, and my hand was had just two four drops in it or something, and I'd be like, look, I would take any land off the top here. I would literally take the worst land in my deck off the top here. I just need to hit my questing beast next turn. I just, you know, I just need to get my... Um, Vivian down because the mono red deck for example plays all these super cheap creatures right but the green deck is actually kind of glutted on these threes and fours in a way that the other aggro decks don't tend to be and they're such hard hitting fours it's not a deck that loses if you don't resolve your three drop on curve it's a deck that loses if you never get to four that's one of the easiest ways to lose playing this deck and so that alone does make me just want to err on the side of playing some number of tap lands just to make sure that we can eventually get that great henge out. We can get that questing beast, whatever it is, right? We just really need to make sure we get there. Yeah, the big question is going to be, like, what are your 25th and 26th lands? Are they mm. the fight spell? Are they this? Yeah. Are, are you fine just running the shot, the lightning bolt lands? You know? Yeah. Like, that's, the, that's the part I really want to get into and it's a big part of the evaluation of these. I think we can see a lot of good cards and still find no room for them. Yep, I would agree. I kind of wonder whether these monocolor decks in particular are going to be incentivized to just jam on these cards, just like play a lot of them. Mm. I'm curious. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. If this card were red, like the thought exercise for me is that we'd play it for sure because you just want to be able to keep presenting threats. And the fact that it's green, I think, is like maybe we're being snobby about what our threats are. <laughs> yeah, we are, right? Because we're used to, you know, three mana five vibes that didn't take any work to get out. I don't know. I mean, put this into any previous standard and people would call us lunatics for not raving about it. <laughs> so there you go. This is a card I'm not planning on playing CGB Vastwood Fortification. <laughs> One green instant, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, tap green land on the back. Can we just keep moving along here? You paid your debts to society. Go yeah. on. Okay, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Oh, however, okay, there's two cards I'm excited to talk about coming up. I'm just going to read this one because it caught my eye, but CGB, we are not losing the gate. We're not losing the gate, baby. That's true, and that is good. They're printing it. Blue mages rejoice. Mm -hmm. good times all right why don't you read for us skyclave shade one black creature shade rare three one with a kicker of two and a black skyclave shade can't block if skyclave shade was kicked it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it so uh that would be a five three can't block for five mana if Skyclave Shade is in the graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard this turn when you play a land. So one of my big questions is, is this better or worse than Gutter Bones? It is probably worse. That was my read too. But Gutter a Bones worse. is a little more to get back and put on the field, but Gutter Bones was low opportunity cost because it's one mana. So you usually aren't doing much with your first mana. For the shade, I'm thinking in mono black that there just aren't many good two drops, so this card is probably fine. But how much does the three one get in there? And then how many times do you want to recast it, hoping it gets in there again? It's not bad with sacrifice because you play a land, trigger the landfall ability, you cast it from the graveyard. It's only two mana invested to get it back instead of three with gutter bones. So it's better in the Sacrifice Engine than Gutter Bones was, I think. But 
still, I don't think this is something you should run out and put four of into your deck because I don't. I think it lacks versatility, and I think that at the point of the game where you're paying five for it, you really wish you had something else. And I do still think it's a player. It's a one or a two, maybe something to do with that mana, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm 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 kind of I'm in and out on this one. Here's a question I have. If we play this with the Demon Hug, doesn't it give us a fair amount of inevitability? I'm not saying it's fast, but doesn't that just threaten to end the game pretty consistently? It is fast, and it does threaten to end the game. It's about as vulnerable as that play can get, and the problem is that with the Demon Hug late game, you want to discard your lands that you don't need anymore, and here you have to play them to get back the shade. That's a good point. And then you need to discard something to get back the hug. This is a compelling discard effect. So if you have something that pays you for discarding, discarding the shade can be good because you get it back at a pretty low cost. Yeah. And it is a two drop that is very good with Menace and Death Touch. So it is a good companion to the Arcfiend's Vessel for a Call of the Death Dweller. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. It's definitely playable. I just don't... I don't think I'm going to be jamming four anytime soon. I don't think that this is what I always want to be doing. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with that. The, the, and not being able to block kind of sucks. So that's, I think that's a bigger downside than people realize. Otherwise, it would be a pretty sticky threat. But imagine if you have two of these and then turn four and later, you just keep replaying them from the graveyard every turn. That could be something. If you're under no pressure, it is compelling. Yeah. It, it makes flooding out okay. Could you see this being kind of a nightmare for control decks to deal with? Well, it can't be hit by ECD. Yeah. If you bring it back as a five power creature, if they shatter it, they draw a card. Yeah. If it gets brazen borrowed, it's pretty cheap it's to cheap. recast. So just free play it. Like, yeah, this is a card designed to make control very annoyed. The 04 from birth blocks it until it starts getting kicked. This is another one of those cards that's annoying for control because when the battlefield's empty, it's constant pressure. Right. And it does, once it gets kicked, it gets around the Castle Ardenvale tokens, or at least you have to double them up, which is kind of annoying. Actually, triple them, right? Yeah, you have to triple block it, so that's kind of a no-go. I mean, I guess they can chump block it still, but... Well, now we have to compare it to other new cards that are entering the format. So Skyclave Apparition is, you know, we'll, we'll exile this for breakfast. That's a good point. Yep. Bring it out of the board for sure. Interesting. I think it's going to be a player and I think it's going to be something to keep an eye on. It's also going to enable repeated sack synergies and stuff like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. pretty cool. Cool card. Yeah. Grackmaw, Skyclave Ravenger, one green black. For a legendary creature, Hydra Hara at rare, it is a 0-0, zero, zero, so rip. Boom. <laughs> However, wait, there's more. Grackmaw enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. When another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one plus one counter on Grackmaw. When Grackmaw dies, create an XX black and green Hydra creature token where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Grackmaw. So... This card seems pretty dece. The flaw of a 3-3 that dies into a 3-3 seems pretty resilient to me. It seems like the rest of the text on the card is kind of gravy. I don't know whether this ends up being a premium 3-drop in the deck remains to be seen, but I think it's an objectively decent card. The weird thing is I can read it a hundred times and I can't identify why I feel this way, but i it's an objectively decent card. I can't imagine playing anywhere. Yeah. A 3-3 three, three for 3 is just not that exciting. Exactly. And the 3-drop spot has been... It's losing a lot of the juice. Like, it's losing Mayhem Devil and Midnight Reaper and cards like that that were c- competing in the color space. It still has Woe Strider, which is a heck of a card. And some could say this in combination with Woe Strider could do really cool things. And I see what they're saying. I, I feel like it should be more. I don't know what deck I'm playing with this card. It didn't inspire me. It's cool art, but I immediately am like, am I going to build Abzan, Conclave Mentor, Skyclave Ravager? Never, right? The mana the is a disaster. So I don't know what I'm doing. 
Do you have anything? I Well, it seems like they're pushing this plus one, plus one counter theme in the set. So if that deck ends up being actually a contender, then I could see this card in it. This card could scale up very well in a deck like that. And once this thing reaches like a 5-5 five, five and then dies into a 5-5, five, five, now we're talking about a card that's actually pretty threatening. But I'm with you. I think it's kind of an indication of how far we've come that a card like this might just not even be in consideration for day one of standard. This or the rogue Tarmogoyfi? Yeah. yeah, which one? No, I mean, like, which one? The Nighthawk, right? Well, I'm more into this than the Nighthawk, but I'm kind of legendarily down on the Nighthawk, so... Yeah, it is, it's weird. Yeah, hard to tell. This is all about the shell. If the counter synergy ends up being a thing, then we'll consider this card. But otherwise, probably not. Why don't you read this one for us, CGB? Auron Reef Ooze. Two and a green. Creature Ooze. Two, two, body. Rare. When this card enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Yeah, we did it. And whenever the ooze attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Is that going to put it over the top? Uh, it's a Three start. mana cards that use counters. Let's go. One of the problems with this is when it attacks, you get the benefit, but it has to be attacking, which kind of sucks. Yeah. It is. It, it does curve. Okay, so yeah, they printed the Mentor. We have all this other stuff going on, but I just, I'm waiting for the thing, right? I'm waiting for that one card to be like, oh baby, we are doing it. This isn't it for me. Grackmaw's not it for me. I just still haven't seen that card. Strong agree. Yeah. <laughs> you know what was it? Elephant Jesus. He's yeah, gone. Elephant Jesus. And he he got rotated out, baby, so. He gone. <sighs> Too bad. Rip. Ah, uh, here we go. This is the card I've been alluding to a million times. Read for us Felidar Retreat, CGB. Felidar Retreat is three and a white for an enchantment with some kind of pink-hued artwork with a cat with a butterfly on its head that looks like they put a bow on it. True story. Moving on. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token or put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. You have alluded to this card many times. I will just get my piece out there. I think this card is a fun combo-y thing that's going to be too slow for competitive play. So you go ahead. Tell me all the things you're going to do with Felidar Retreat. Okay, I probably agree with you. I think it's a pretty low ask to just make two twos from land drops. So that's not the worst. This is not Griffin Airy. This card doesn't ask much of you. So we were seeing this go wide white deck in standard playing, uh, what is it, Basri's Solidarity. That was a one-time effect. Now granted it was cheap, but it's not hard for me to imagine that you play Felidar Retreat and then you just pump your team every turn. That could get out of hand real quick. It scales with itself nicely. You can make some number of cats, and then you can start buffing them up. Again, I agree. It's a four mana card, so that's a little bit much to ask. But it's also an enchantment. It's hard to deal with. I'm not going to write this card off. If you have any additional ways to help landfall, this thing could start going off pretty hard. Did I mention it was an enchantment? Anyway. <laughs> I know, that's, <laughs> yes, you did. You did. Is, is it, that's what you got, huh? That's, that, that's yeah. I, I don't have like a super hard argument on it, but I feel like it does synergize enough with enough of the other things going on. Like, okay, combine this with Scoot Swarm. That's going to get out of hand pretty quick, right? Or just Scoot Swarm. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, come on. Those things getting plus one, plus one is going to matter a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, hit, hit this and Scoot Swarm. Off yeah. a, and three lands off a of Genesis Ultimatum, baby. Oh, we baby. There we go. Four color nonsense. I mean, it is an Omnath colors. There you go. So are most of the set. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to bat for this card, but apparently there was one of these that was played the last time around in Standard that saw some play, so people seem to think this one could see as well. Yeah, Retreat to Amiria saw a little bit of play, and this is better than that. Yep. Exactly. So, I mean, I'm with you. I'm skeptical. It's going to have to do something, but I don't know. Pretty good card. 
Here's a card which I think you might be interested in, CGB. Shadow's Verdict. Why don't you read that for us? Three black black sorcery rare. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield. End all creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. Taste it, Oro. Taste it. I think this card's a trap. Do you? I do. Yeah. I do. I think that if you pl- because it's a it's a an, it's a universal effect. So you are exiling these cards from your graveyard as well. I think that if you are playing this card, you've tricked yourself into playing a deck that doesn't play the cards it would hit, including Uro and Croxa. And I am questioning whether or not you should be playing said deck yeah. at all. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you're so. right. It's like what control deck actually will want to run this? I don't quite know. Yeah, it people are immediately like Grixis control. Okay. Knock yourself out. <laughs> so hear me out though. If you brought this out of the board against these current sacrifice lists, doesn't this card pretty much annihilate that deck? Yeah, yeah, on turn five. Yeah. Which is a big problem. Also, if their turn four play or turn five play or turn six play is a rankle, like that's just true. gonna get destroyed they can juke you pretty hard or if they're trying to go higher up the chain with things like Corvold. Mm-hmm. but i do think that there are some decks that get gotten pretty hard by this card and probably can't come back from it what's weird is it might have been built to take out luris once and for all yeah yeah and it's five mana it's so slow for that job. I agree. Couldn't it have been... I, maybe it would have been too powerful at four mana, but it's pretty the conditional thing. It's an interesting card, and it is a ramp set. You can play this on turn four with the right setup. But I hate that you have to abandon strategies like Uro that are extremely powerful in order to do it. And for some people, that might be what they're in for, you know? what? Like, what is Esper Control losing to run two of these? Probably not that's, much. That's a good point. Yeah, but that's a good I'm point. still. I still think, as far as com- like high level competitive play, this would be a trap if you were to go after Shadow's Verdict. I think that where it exists in a competitive meta is as like the one of in the sideboard that you bring in very rarely that the opponent on open deckless tournaments sees in your list and has to respect. I mean, that's what I'm thinking about. Is I I don't read this as a main deck card at all, but I do think it could be powerful out of the board. It has a powerful effect, and you're right. People will have to respect it, and certain decks will have to respect it pretty hard. Yeah, Laracy, Graveyardy, Clericky kind of deck might be on a five turn clock to just like kill them before before turn five, or you basically lose the game on the spot. So you're gonna feel pretty bad when you lose two Croxes and you know your Woe Strider and some other stuff to this card. Agreed. Thanks for listening and catch part seven and the stunning conclusion to this series over the weekend. Bye-bye.